Welcome to Africa on Arts TV. Each week, Africa will highlight news, views, and information to reveal the true color of the continent. This week, Ethiopia to fill the Nile Dome and the solar eclipse are the focus pointers from Ethiopia. The Malawi presidential election and the Africa continental free trade area to go ahead are the other pointers we will focus. Stay with us. <laughs> An Ethiopian man said by his family to be 114 years old has recovered from coronavirus according to a Facebook post by Dr. Yared Agudo who runs the hospital in the capital Addis Ababa where the man was being treated. People over the age of 80 are considered to be most vulnerable if they catch the virus. Dr. Yared said the patient is fully recovered and now he is in a good health. Dr. Yared added, long live and health for our health officers and workers. The man does not have a birth certificate confirming his age, but Dr. Yared said he is over 100 years old. If he is 114 years old, he would be the world's oldest man. The previous record hold died last month, age 112, in United Kingdom. Ethiopia has recovered more than 500,000 cases in the virus and 89 diseases. The country declared a state of emergency in April to help cure the spread of the virus. Business remain open, but schools are closed. Ethiopia has retired, it will start filling the reservation of controversial Dam of Nile that have been at the center of decay-long dispute in East Africa even without an agreement from Egypt and Sudan. The construction of the $4.6 billion Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam on the Blue Nile, which is more than 70% complete and promised to provide much-needed electricity to Ethiopia 100 million people as a point among the three Nile River Basin countries. Ethiopian Foreign Minister Gadu Andargacho said, go ahead with filling the dam next month, even if there is no agreement reached. He added, the Egypt want to offer a lot, but they are not ready to offer us anything. They want to control everything, which we are not going to discuss a water sharing agreement. A decay of difficult talk involving the two downstream countries, Egypt and Sudan, and an upper stream Ethiopia has reached a deadlock with Egypt turning to the United Nations Security Council last week. Egypt, which is almost entirely dependent on the Nile for its fresh water supply, is worried to secure a legally binding deal that would guarantee a minimum flow and a mechanism to resolving dispute between the dumb start operating. In a letter to the Security Council on Tuesday, Sudan warned the lives of millions of people were to be engaged if Ethiopia move ahead with a plan before an agreement is reached. However, Ethiopia remains undeterrated from starting to fill the 74 billion cube meter reservoirs when it's rainy season being in July regardless the deal is being reached. Ethiopia says the project is indispensable for its development and insists the downstream country's water supply will be unaffected. Voting was peaceful in Malawi as people took part in a rerun poll five months after the president, Peter Mutakis, disputed 2019 victory was annulled. There was long query in some places indicating a high level of enthusiasm. Evidences of a vote tempering led to judges scrabbling his May 2019 victory. The country's judicial has been widely pressed for its robust response. Malawi becomes the second African nation to know a presidential election over irregularity after Kenya in 2017. As BBC's report, the country have been brightly divided in a run-up to Tuesday's rerun. Widespread anti-government protests and violence threatened to plug Malawi into even deeper crisis. Speaking after he had voted in southern Malawi, Mr. Peter allegedly that he had violence in some opposition shareholder. The president is quoted saying, it's very sad our secretary general has been beaten up. Egyptian President Abdullah Fatil al-Sisi had occurred his army to be ready to carry out mission inside or outside the country to protect its national security and detention over Turkey's intervention in neighboring Libya. He also warned forces loyal to the internationally recognized government of national accord in Tripoli to not cross the current front line between them and rigor commander Khalif Haftallah, eastern based self-styled Libya National Army. The government of the national accord is with Turkish support has received 14 months assault over the capital by the Libya National Army. The Libya National Army is backed by Russia, the United Arab Emirates, and Egypt. Al Sisi on Saturday torched an airbase near Egypt's 1,200 km long west board in Libya, where state television showed him watching fighter jets and helicopters taking off. 
an African wide free trade agreement is unlikely to face any further delay even if the second wave of coronavirus infection hits the region. It is said that the pandemic continues. In 2021, it will develop the necessity public health protocol to continue and to push on with implementation of the African continental free trade area. The Secretariat will take advices from health offices as it work to implement the deal and revive economic growth on the continent. While the agreement entered into force legally last year, commerce due to has started on July 1 has been delayed as a pandemic setback negotiation to lay the foundation for trade in good, including tariff constraints. When fully operated by 2030, it could be the world's biggest free trade zone area with potential market of 1.2 billion people and combined gross domestic product of $2.5 trillion. 54 of the 55 nations recognized by the African Union has signed up to join the area, with Eritrea being exception, while 28 countries have ratified the agreement. An annual solar eclipse occurred on 21 June 2020, which was visible across large parts of the Central and Eastern Africa early in the morning. The location that passes exactly under the shadow of the moon are in the 16-kilometer wide path through the Democratic Republic of Congo, Central African Republic, South Sudan, Ethiopia, and Eritrea. Other regions have seen a partial eclipse. Unfortunately, the public was not able to gather together in large numbers to view the eclipse due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A ring of fire was visible at the sunrise in Congo, then a higher in the sky spectacular in South Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Yemen, Oman, Pakistan, India, China, and Taiwan. People living in Ethiopia, particularly in Walaga in Oromia, Ajabar and La Libala in Amahara, and in numerous places in Afar, woke up a spectacular fire ring as up to 19% of the sun was blocked by the moon. Many people in Ethiopia, however, missed the ones in a DK site due to the lack of protective glasses at a local market. In the capital Addis Ababa, many people returned to their home disappointed after an hours of gathering up a much publicized site that was unable to see due to a partially cloud morning. More than 30,000 tourists have booked to travel to La Libela, home of the Rock of Heon Church of UNESCO, registered world heritage and regarded by many as an eighth wonder of the world to see the eclipse but had a cancel due to the virus. The next time a solar eclipse will be visible in Ethiopia will be in 36 years, according to an institution in the country. We hope you enjoy our program. If you have any question or suggestion, feel free to use any kind of platform to reach us. I'm your host, Bethlehem Baharan. Till next week, enjoy the rest of Arts TV program.